Hey guys, welcome back. Joe Brunsman, Insurance Broker of the Stars. Tonight, I'm actually not talking about insurance. I'm talking about a new law that one of my clients just made me aware of. And I was like, oh my God, this is going to impact 95% of MSPs directly, if not 100% of MSPs, depending upon how this plays out. So I thought I'd give you guys a heads up on this so you don't get blindsided by it. Now, this is the Corporate Transparency Act. Why is this happening? Well, it's supposed to provide law enforcement with more information, dealing with beneficial owners. We're going to talk about what that is because it's not necessarily what you think it is. And it's supposed to detect, prevent, punish terrorism, money laundering, other misconduct within businesses. Now, per the American Bar Association from their website, specifically states, quote, it places a significant burden on small businesses required to collect beneficial ownership information. So if the ABA is saying that, it's not just me. I'm telling you, this is going to be a big deal and it's going to be a pain to deal with. Now, who must comply? Corporations, LLCs, other companies created by a filing with the Secretary of State or equivalent thereof. So pretty much all you guys watching this video. But the source definition of who has to comply is actually super broad. And so it could apply to other types of organizations as well, right? Could it apply to a sole proprietorship? I'm not really sure. I don't think anybody knows at this point. Now, it does require small to medium-sized businesses to report this beneficial ownership information to the Financial Crimes Enforcement Network, which is FinCEN, probably an organization... Hopefully, most of you guys uh, have never dealt with and didn't even know existed. Now, who's going to be exempt from this? Uh, probably not you guys, unfortunately. But there's a ton of exemptions. I mean, this is obviously a very long statute. So I'm not your attorney. I'm not giving you legal advice. I'm just giving you kind of a 30,000 foot view here. But it's pretty much organizations that are already regulated by the federal or state governments that already have to disclose their beneficial ownership information to those government entities, as well as large operating companies. Now, what is that? You got to employ at least 20 full-time people in the U.S., gross revenues over $5 million, and you have to have a physical presence or office in the U.S. So this isn't dealing with large companies. Traditionally, that's who the laws at least ostensibly apply to, and then it crushes the little guy. No, this is just outright crushing the little guy with more stuff to do and you're gonna be held to account for this. Now, if you're an MSP and you have CPA firm clients, accounting firm clients, if they're registered with PCAOB, then I believe that they're exempt from this. Obviously, they need to go to their lawyer and work through all that. However, um, if you're not sure if your accounting firm is registered with PCAOB, I believe you can still go to the PCAOB website and just look up the firm name there. Also, investment advisors register with the SEC. Now, I believe it's 110 million AUM and under. Does not have to be registered with the SEC. But if they are registered with the SEC, they always there's all kinds of paperwork associated with that to begin with. Uh, but check with your investment advisors to see if that would apply to them. Now, what is a beneficial owner? And this is where I think it's going to get interesting for MSPs, right? Because you guys are essentially taking an entire part of an organization and then it gets outsourced to your organization. So beneficial owner. And this is where it gets really dicey. And of course, God bless government legislators for putting in um, just complete vagary into laws that could have substantial impacts on people's lives. So it says someone who directly or indirectly exerts quote substantial control or controls or owns at least 25% of the company's ownership interest. So just because someone's not an owner or part owner of that business, it doesn't necessarily mean they're not construed as a beneficial owner under this statute. Someone who directly or indirectly exerts substantial control. Now, what is substantial control? Senior officers of the company, people that can appoint or remove senior officers or majority of the boards, probably large shareholders, and this is where I think it gets interesting and where you guys really got to know about this, not just for your business, but you're going to want to talk to your attorney because it also has a spiel in there where it kind of boils down to 
someone who directs or has substantial influence over important decisions made by the company. So could we construe or do we think this law is going to construe MSPs as someone who, quote, has substantial influence over important decisions? I mean, you have substantial influence over generally the decisions that these organizations are making in terms of all the sysadmin and cybersecurity stuff. What if you are the VCIO or some functional equivalent or, or something akin to that uh, for a bunch of different organizations? Are they going to be putting you down as beneficial owner? What type of ramifications is that going to have on you? Because there's obviously penalties associated with this. There's a whole bunch of information that has to be turned over. So if you're an MSP, if you're a VCIO, I would highly recommend you go to your attorney and you say, hey, what's the jam with this? What would happen if a business comes to me and they say, hey, we're going to put you down as a beneficial owner? What happens if one of your clients just puts you down and maybe they never tell you about it? Um, how is all this going to work out? We just don't know yet. It appears as though they've opened this up for notice and comment rulemaking. So I think think there's going to be some clarification here, but I'm sure like all things, there's still going to be gray areas. Things are still going to be litigated. It's going to get hammered out. So I would just get ahead of this if I were an MSP. Now, when do you report <clears throat> existing companies? So if you're watching this, you're probably an existing company. No later than the 1st of January, 2025. And of course, in that interim, there should be a whole bunch of additional information put out uh, by the governing bodies. And then new companies, if you form after 1 January 24, you got 30 days to do it. So this is not that far away and there is a lot to figure out in the interim. All right, penalties, willful violations, civil penalties up to $500 per day where you're not fixing the violation, criminal fines up to 10K and or two years in prison. So where do you go for help on this? Uh, one, the CPAs don't look like they're super interested in doing this. As far as I have seen, there's been no information put out by the AICPA, the governing body of accountants, to clarify what the role of CPAs are going to be in this endeavor because people think, all right, FinCEN is financial, therefore I go to the CPAs. Well, CPAs are super worried about uh, something called UPL, which is the Unlicensed Practice of Law. They don't really want to get hemmed up on this. As far as I can tell from the ABA, um, and I, I haven't gone too far into uh, the particulars of each state bar association, but I'm sure it's the same. They're probably going, hey, we need more information on this. We can't adequately advise our own clients as attorneys until we get some clarification on what this particular law means. But all that being said, please do not wait till the last minute. All right, go ahead, talk to your attorney figure out, hey, is this law going to apply to me? If yes, what do I need to start setting up now? What would happen if a client comes and says, hey, we think you exert substantial control over our organization being our MSP. We want, say, the owner of the MSP to fork over all this information. It's going to go in our filing. Should you say yes? Should you say no? Should you say, hey, go pound sand? I'm not going to give you, you know, my all this information. I don't know. You're going to have to talk to an attorney about that. All right. With that, if you found it useful, you learned something today, like, share, comment, subscribe, please just tell your fellow MSP buddies uh, about this new law coming out. Cause I think it's going to be a bigger deal than a lot of people realize. Uh, normally I talk about insurance. So actually right above me, the evil algorithm will recommend another video. And if you click over there on my beautiful face, you can subscribe to my channel. All right, guys with that, stay safe.